G'day, welcome back to episode 93. In the last episode, we ascended the highest peak in Greece, broke out the hiking boots, and trekked to the home of the gods. In this episode, we continue west, back to the coast, before returning to the mountains. So just down from where we were camping, there's uh, like a scenic route that you can take, which has all different viewpoints to the monasteries. So the monasteries are built on top of these natural pillars and these rock formations are absolutely incredible. They're, the landscape is amazing. So originally there was 24 monasteries which were um, in use. Now there's, I think, six, which four are for men and two are for women. And they were built in the 14th century. And at the time they only had access via a retractable ladder or the, what are they called, Mark? The little, windless, like the, the windlass? Bu bucket. Yeah, the buckets. <laughs> But yeah, apparently there's um, about 10 monks who live sort of in each of them. So there's not that many that live in there. You can go inside them, but yeah, I think we're just going to go for a drive around and have a look at the different viewpoints just so that we can sort of see yeah, the, the because whole... Because when you're in them, you can't see them. So we thought we'd be better driving around. Because from here, you can kind of see multiple. If you come over this way, you can see that one over there as well. And you see the ropes, the cables connecting, which is... Um, the kind of supply lines. This one here's got one too. We just watched the, um, they're doing, doing a bit of a renovation on this one. So the little cable car's just gone across to pick up all the new terracotta tiles for the roof. But yeah, really awesome place to visit. There's a beautiful beach down there, which we're going to go yes. for swim at tomorrow morning. The water looks amazing. It's nice and protected here. And a few boats anchored. It is a lovely spot. This is exactly what I was hoping for today. So we managed to get in a bit of a swim this morning, though as the forecast predicted at midday it was pretty spot on. A heap of clouds started coming over and the wind picked up a fair bit. So then at the same time the guys who own the little beach bar, they arrived and they just started battening down basically. It looked like they were preparing for some pretty serious it's winds. Away. Yeah. So yeah, we've packed down and I think we're just gonna go for a drive into uh, towards Parga and just see if we can find somewhere that We'll give us a bit of protection for the next 48 hours at least so yeah that's sort of what our plan is hey yeah <laughs> so we'll just see how it goes so we went for a drive today into Parga which was a little bit further west from where we camped last night but uh, yeah on the way we seen another beach which was really really protected from all the winds which were coming from the east. Okay, so we're here playing cards, we're just about to get into bed and I got a notification on my phone, it just says emergency alert, um, civil protection Greece, extreme weather, extreme weather warning in your area, avoid unnecessary transportation, basements and flood areas, secure objects that may become windborne debris, check local media. <laughs> 
So um, yeah, I think we're just gonna go for a walk. There's no signal here, so we're gonna go for a walk up on top of the hill and just book in to the, one of the places that we saw in Parga. So I think we'll do that and then check in as soon as we can tomorrow. Was that sleep last night? Great night's sleep last night. The electrical storm rolled over us at about 1am and it was the most intense electrical storm I've ever witnessed. It was unbelievable. It was, it sounded like it was only 15 metres above us. The trippy was shaking from the thunder. It was, it was wild. We thought it might pass over briefly but then it stuck around for a while so we ended up coming down here. I was a bit worried that if it hit the car I don't know, the struts might fail and the roof fall down or something, so <laughs> might be a bit traumatic, but um, that's, <laughs> that's what we did. So we ended up sleeping down here, which was a bit more comfortable. But anyway, we're going to pack up now. We're just having some breakfast and we're going to head into Parga and, and park up for the, for the night. So after two nights of bunkering down in Parga to miss the wild weather, the clouds parted, we packed up and hit the road again. The timing was actually pretty fortunate as I had stubbed and broke my toe at the beach we stayed at previously. This downtime allowed me to visit the doctor, have it straightened out and gave me time off my feet to rest and get ready for the mountains again. So we've arrived where I had pinned for us to camp tonight, which is next to one of these incredible old stone bridges. There's actually, so this bridge goes over to a water mill on the other side. So we're going to drive across the creek um, and then camp on the other side. But there's a heap of these bridges in the uh, local area. Like there's kind of like a bit of a, a hiking trail that you can do with them. You can also drive to go and see them all. But yeah, pretty cool spot. We just kept following the track past the water mill and came across this beautiful little old cottage, although you think it's a church? Yeah, I think it's a church. There's no one here, but it's so cool. It's got like a green roof because it's just been taken over by all of the, the moss and just the cutest red door and windows. Ready to go? Yeah, ready to go. <laughs> Come on, driver. <laughs>
So this was a good camp spot, nice and quiet. It did rain all last night. Subsequently, the canvas was absolutely saturated this morning. So thankfully, the sun did stick its head out a few times and now it's obviously not and it's just going in and out of showers now. Um, but when it did, we managed to dry the canvas, so happy about that. It was still a little bit damp from that big storm we got before we got to Parga. So it was good to just give it a, a good, good dry out. The weather does look pretty ominous this morning. Some of these clouds are pretty dark. So we've just packed down and we're going to head back down the track and explore those bridges. The, I mean, as bad as the weather is, this is just beautiful lighting for photography. The, the um, autumn leaves and stuff are just magic. I think it's about 30 k's back through the village and up to another place called Vicus, which is, there's a huge canyon there. So we might spend the night there. Uh, there's a couple of springs, but I'm thinking because of all this rainfall, the springs, which usually are really clear, I think they might be a bit brown, but we'll see what they're like and hopefully we might be able to have a very chill swim. And then we'll head into Albania tomorrow. We've just stopped back at the water mill on the way back out, which is right next to the bridge. Looks like there's a bit more water flowing today after all that rain last night, but it's all right. And the rain right now, <laughs> that's all right. Nothing the tree we can't handle. Eighteen twenty-seven. Pretty old. Okay. So this is the old. Uh, I guess in the central part of the mill. This is the grinding wheel here, which is a big piece of stone. The hopper here where the grains go in. And then there's, um, down here is the actual water wheel, which the water comes from through the back here and turns the wheel, turns the stone, grinds it, and then the water flows back out in that chute out there. It's not actually, right now. it's done a... It's had obviously a reno done on it, but I'm not sure if it's done for work purposes or just for demonstration. But there's a lot of something in there. And then there's also a little room with a cozy fireplace. example of what the foot br footbridges are like in this area. This is obviously just a single one but there is doubles and a triple which is uh, the one that we camped near last night. That one had two big ones and a little one but yeah this one was built in the 1750s and it's crazy to think that this is already almost three, 300 years old. This area is known as Zagari and rests in the northern end of the Pindus mountain range. During the 18th and 19th centuries, it's estimated 160 of these stone arch bridges were built. Up until the 1950s, these bridges were used as the primary means to travel in this mountainous region. Now, only around 60 survive, some still the only access to certain areas. It's been interesting over the course of our journey to see the construction techniques of different cultures of the same time period. Back in Meghalaya, northeast India, another mountainous region, the locals created their bridges from live tree roots. Both bridges utilise building materials and techniques readily available and suitable to their locality. Perhaps this is testament as to how they are still standing and used to this day. If you enjoyed the episode, feel free to give it a thumbs up and join us in the next one where we explore the deepest canyon in the world and head to Albania. Thanks for watching. See ya.